Hi guys, welcome back. Jyotsna here from Amateur Artist Forever. Today I am going to show you how I painted this painting. In this painting, we have used a lot of colors to make the trees beautiful and vibrant. Stick around and I'll show you four of my sold realistic landscape paintings. These are large paintings, a good four feet plus in size. I was highly commended and appreciated for creating them. And these are some of my proudest moments. I have used the same techniques to create this painting as well as those. So pay attention and do try this technique when you paint. A close friend of mine has commissioned this artwork for her home. She wanted the painting to have autumn colors. I have kept the sky clear in blue by using cobalt blue and titanium white. For the trees, I have used different colors like burnt sienna, cadmium red, yellow ochre, sap green, mixed with a little ivory black and ultramarine blue. I have finished the basic composition of the painting and where I want my elements. Before we begin with the trees, I'll quickly show you how I made shallow water. I'm using ivory black to make round and random shapes in the river bed as I want it to be shallow so that some of the stones are visible through the water. I'm using burnt sienna with ivory black to just fill the stones with a dark brown color. I'm using cobalt blue and titanium white with a hint of burnt sienna to make the reflections of the sky. Since this is a shallow river bed and water isn't still, the reflections need to be a little wavy. This is the first layer of reflections. We will fine tune as we proceed with the painting. I am also making random reflections of the trees in the water. The brush strokes should be flat and horizontal and short. Now let's draw some trees. Take a liner brush and use ivory black and a little water to make the tree trunks. Relax your wrists. Use only the tip of the liner brush and make trunks. We are making the trunks to help us make branches. Don't worry about how they look. They will hardly be seen under the leaves and branches when we paint on top of the trunks. Go slow. I am making more trunks as I need a lot of trees since this is a forest. I'm going to speed up the next few minutes. You can either stop or make more trunks so that you can practice. Now we will make branches. A few, don't get carried away, a maximum of 5 to 6 branches. Take a fan brush, make either a mixture of sap green with burnt sienna if you are making a green tree or use yellow ochre if you are making a tree that looks like mine. Using just the tips of the brush, make branches. Use a tapping motion. Don't push the entire length of the brush. First use the right edge of the bristles and then use the left. That way you will have random brush strokes. Be gentle. Don't go overboard. Let a little bit of background be visible in between the colors. I am using sap green mixed with cadmium yellow to make green trees and crimson red and cadmium red to make red and pink ones. Now I am going to use a size 0 brush to make strokes to show leaves. I have added a little white and lemon yellow in yellow ochre. As we continue to add layers, we will make the color brighter and lighter by adding either titanium white or lemon yellow. 
That way we can show volume on the branches. We must ensure we are not covering the dark layers below. We are overlapping colors while still showing some of the darker shades below. Take your time, we are using only the tips to make marks. And in this manner, I will continue to build layers and make more trees and branches. I am using different colors to make trees and I am making some trees shorter and some taller. Now I'll show you how to paint stones or rocks. It's very simple. First take ivory black and make a shadow side of the stone. Any random shape. Make a bunch of stones to practice. Now take yellow ochre, mix a little ivory black and raw umber. If you don't have raw umber, use burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Make a beige grey color and paint the side of the stone which faces the light source. In our case, the sun. Make different shades to just touch up the stones or rocks. A little cobalt or a little red or orange on one side. Objects reflect the light or color that is around them. And in doing so, their color slightly gets tinted. If you ensure you add more color to the object on all the sides, it will be very easy for you to obtain a 3D effect. Once your base layer is dry, add a lighter layer on top in some parts to highlight the edges of the stones or the rocks. You can modify the shape as you go along because stones or rocks are of random shapes. And believe me, it's hard to be able to make random shapes. And we are done. See, it was so easy to make trees and stones. Now practice these and in the next tutorial, I'll take up another landscape painting with a lily pond. And we will use the same techniques we learned here for the rocks around the pond. And I will also give you an introduction to drawing human figures. Till then, enjoy the time lapse of the painting. In a couple of minutes, as promised, I'll show you 
the remaining and by far my most favorite realistic landscape artworks that I've created using the same technique that I used in this video. You don't want to miss it. Since I was creating this work from my imagination and as the ideas flowed, I made some decisions and changes as I went along with the painting. Always remember, if something doesn't feel right, change it even if you have spent time on it. Because if you don't change it as soon as you don't feel it's adding to the composition, the effect or the impact of the artwork will diminish. With acrylic paints, everything can be corrected. So never worry about changing your composition or elements. For example, this bridge. Initially, I was going to paint a bridge made of fallen tree or logs. But I was suddenly inspired to introduce a man-made bridge made out of bricks and cement. A way of showing a bridge connecting a systematic human civilization to wild nature. I also felt a need to add a bird soaring in the sky. So I chose a stork instead as I wanted to paint a white bird to symbolize innocence and purity of nature. With final touches to the trees, the grass and the reflections in the water, we are at the end of the painting process. You have learned how to paint trees and stones. When you practice regularly, you will develop your own technique and your own style. Now take a look at the finished painting and as promised, my three landscape paintings. With that, we've come to the end of this tutorial. If you found this video helpful, please like this video for me. If you have not subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and keep the notification sign on. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay positive, keep painting. Bye-bye.